Hi, I'm David Birnbaum, and this is Focus Tape Summa Synopsis. As you know, I'm the author of Summa Metaphysica. As you're aware, Volume 1 was published in 1988 by Katav Publishing. Volume 2 was first posted online in 2005, and then published hardcover by Harvard Matrix in 2008. From our perspective, Summa presents an elegant and powerful metaphysics. Now, FYI, background, metaphysics, and principle means beyond physics. Metaphysics as a field attempts a con conceptual understanding of the cosmos. It's juxtaposed against physics, which is focused very heavily on an experimental understanding of the cosmic order the extent that it can experiment. There's extrapolation from experimentation, but the core of physics is anchored in experimentation. The Summa Metaphysics was first proposed via Summa 1 in 1988. No known weak points have emerged in 25 years of academic scrutiny. So this is a focused presentation of the core themes of Summa. As you may be aware, Summa takes a hitherto mundane concept, potential, and then sort of turbocharges it. Summa force multiplies it into potential to the infinite power. Our key term is quest for potential, infinitely iterated, meaning quest for potential within potential within potential. So the first level of Summa hypothesis would simply be that quest for potential, our favorite term, infinitely iterated, unifies and drives the cosmos forward. What follows on this presentation is the next level of hypothesis. For reference, I would label it synopsis. So here we go. The cosmos is possibly best described as an overarching and morphing wave of quest for potential. For shorthand notation, I call this Q4P, quest for potential. I also call it infinite divine potential. Now, Q4P eternally seeks after its own maximal potential. In our view, Q4P keeps a very careful eye on the short term, medium term, and possible long term. That is, Q4P is vigilant regarding three interrelated nested components. First, survivability. It must prevail. Second, the array of potential possibilities. These have their own hierarch internal hierarchy. And finally, third, an opening or a minimum maintaining a path to possible extraordinary action. Quest for potential. Can we possibly tether this concept biblically for those of religious predilection? Yes. In biblical terms, the Hebrew, Ahayeh Asher Ahayeh, I will be that which I will be. The name of the divine articulated to Moses at the burning bush saga, circa 1250 BCE, in the desert just outside of Pharaoh's Egyptian capital. Now back to our theory. Infinite divine potential, AKA quest for potential, AKA Q4P, drives the cosmos forward and infuses us with life. Now eternally and initially, Q4P exists only in metaphysical realms. And its own quite concise equation, Q4P to the infinite power, will elegantly encompass the entire cosmic order and capture its essence. We conjecture that at an early stage of the metaphysical cosmic continuum, the interrelated equations of physics, math, chemistry, et al. emerge as the optimal expression of Q4P at that relatively early point in time. In turn, these equations seek actualization and optimization and embodiment. That is the equations seek for, actively seek, and ultimately maneuver for, and deploy for, actualization, 
optimization and indeed eventually corporeal embodiment. The audience should be aware that the contemporary MIT Center for Extreme Quantum Information Theory, director Seth Lloyd and Jeffrey H. Shapiro, takes a roughly parallel track via theoretical quantum mechanics. You can Google XQIT MIT. It rhymes. XQIT MIT. Their approach is more mechanistic than mine, but they travel a parallel path. In any event, back to those metaphysical equations. My hunch is that high on their to-do list, they seek love and or the ability to give love. So as Q4P have infinite power? Well, Q4P does not have infinite power, but has very, very considerable power. Enough power to ignite a cosmos, especially in realms where their equations, with the equations of physics and math and chemistry, can project their power. Thus, the resolution of the great so-called Goldilocks enigma in science, to be elaborated on it in the future focus tape, now becomes readily at hand. Meaning, the equations make quite sure that all the key critical calibrations and constants were lined up and in line. The gates were all lined up. The late great Princeton physicist John Wheeler would probably smile and say that SUMA is Birnbaum's sketched out version of Wheeler's it from bit conjecture. However, Birnbaum, meaning myself, might be uncomfortable with the heavily me mechanistic aspect of Wheeler. As we are slightly uncomfortable with the heavily mechanistic aspect of Seth Lloyd. But we're both and all traveling in the same general direction. Now back to our synopsis. The equations wanted out from the loneliness of the void. They simply could not take it anymore. The equations discern a line of escape from out of the void and into reality. The escape route is via igniting the universe as we know it, meaning as scientists understand it x billion years ago. Now Einstein and comrades postulate and quite amply demonstrate in the 20th century that splitting an atom might unleash an atomic explosion. We're not Nobel laureate physicists. We are not even physicists. We are mere conceptual theorists. But we stand on their illustrious shoulders and hypothesize, we conjecture, in the 21st century, that perhaps splitting the mysterious number zero, or the zero point, whatever exactly that was, unleashed not only positives and negatives, not only minus one to minus infinity, and plus one to plus infinity, but sufficient energy to literally ignite and create the universe, our universe. So the Big Bang, the Genesis point, the Baratian point, is calibrated and ignited. This Big Bang is calibrated to ultimately seed the universe with approximately 100 elements. These 92 to 100 plus elements in turn would eventually evolve over time into sentient beings, increasingly capable of greater consciousness, greater feeling, greater emotion, greater projection, and indeed, even nobility. That is eventually into humans. In turn, these humans, ourselves, would project our own potential via our works and via our offspring and our offspring's offspring to achieve greater and greater potentials within potential. Ad infinite, across the planet and beyond. Indeed, across our solar system and ultimately beyond. Thus, we're all apparently an integral part of this ever-advancing wave of potential. One can surmise that as high-level sentient beings at the forward wave of cosmic evolvement, we in turn, on some level, evidently help direct the next wave of advance. Meaning we conjecture that our own consciousness is somehow harnessed by the overarching Q4P to help guide the next wave, and onward and onward, iterated onward and onward. 
and so on over the millennia. We are indeed apparently quite fully integral to the very advanced wave of quest for potential. Now note, there is no separation between Q4P, between infinite divine potential and ourselves. If Q4P is infinite divine potential, then we integral, we are integral ourselves on an individual level to infinite divine potential. Thus on an individual level, we are a duality, or we are a spectrum. And part of us is quite mortal, both physically and spiritually. And part of us at the other end is quite divine, stretching back from eternal origins and projecting forwards towards infinity, towards the far reaches of time. Now note the irony here. While it is true that humankind seeks the metaphysical and the eternal, and many seek the divine, conversely, the eternal and the metaphysical seeks humankind. Beautifully symmetric. That concludes this presentation. There is a, a series of additional tapes with, on focused topics, which you can see on the site youtubex1000.com. For comments or letters or questions, my direct email is dbprivate at aol.com. DB is in David Birnbaum, dbprivate at aol.com. Letters, whether a paragraph or several pages, are quite welcome. Be well. God bless.